Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Laura and I like to craft stuff. Um, today is I wanted to work on another quilt and uh, most likely the next few videos will be quilts. Uh, just to say, uh, <laughs> what you're seeing right here are a whole bunch of fabrics that I have been slowly collecting in my stash. And it actually started with that um, cat fabric, uh, the purple fabric with green cats. I saw that, but purple, especially cool purples, do not look good on me. And so at the time I was really into making dresses which one of the other purple fabrics is leftover dress fabric or I pulled the dress out of my closet because purple doesn't look good on me, but I love the fabrics. So I am pulling all of these out, uh, seeing if I think they go together and I think they go together. Most of the fabrics have a color that is in one of the other fabrics. I think every single one is represented in a secondary fabric somehow. Um, and not just within the color family. So I'm basically having three color families, one with like the black background, all of the purples, and then all of the minty teals. Mint greens, maybe. Um, and that's what we're working with on this one. I also have always loved mushroom artwork and mushroom fabrics. Uh, what you see, there are definitely two mushroom fabrics here, one of which glows in the dark, and I think I try to show it, and I don't believe that we'll be able to see it. But the other one doesn't um, glow in the dark. There are definitely three fabrics of mushrooms. One of the mint ones has mushrooms as well. So I am still working out of 1,000 Great Quilt Blocks by Maggie McCormick Gordon, and I plan on making many quilts from this book because there are a lot of quilt blocks. A thousand, if we trust the cover. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm still addicted to half square triangles, so I found one that I thought that had three uh, color families that looked about equal and that is called the King's Cross quilt block according to this book. Now I actually went and looked for King's Cross quilts after I began this project because I wanted to see after I had begun it what might it look like in the end and I couldn't find a single one on Pinterest or even on Instagram that was this design. So I have a feeling that this design is named something else in the quilting world, but for her book, she titled it this. Um, I'm also not using the measurements she's using, so I'm still using my five and a half by five and a half square. And of course my cutting tool. Um, but yeah, so this block, according to the book, is called King's Cross. What did show up when I googled and was looking for King King's Cross quilts um, was was much more of a standard like cross that you would see for uh, Christianity. And I, if that is what you came here looking for, I apologize. That's not what this is. So uh, either way. There is a quilt top that comes out of it at the end, so stay tuned. <laughs> In this book, because I'm not using the same measurements or or putting it together exactly as it, they do in the book, um, you're going to watch me do some math and realize that it's wrong. I'm um, trying to figure out how many combos I actually need of each color combo, which I don't entirely wind up using those numbers because the totals were a lot and I didn't, uh, I didn't want to count out all of like the numbers. 
like we're looking at 96 and 48 and 48. I wasn't going to count all of that. Uh, <laughs> but the numbers counted out for within just the, the block was helpful in the end, especially since I wound up changing around the colorway than how it was designed in the book. So she had the triangles on the sides where I have colored it in dark. She had had them light. Uh, so the color combos were going to slightly change. That being said, I had so much fabric that it didn't actually matter. And I could have done it the other way, the way that it was designed in the book, where the two darker colors made the cross and the lighter color was not. And I think that I actually would have liked that colorway design better. However, I didn't think I had enough of the dark fabric to be able to do that, which eh, it is what it is. Uh, I ultimately like how it came out, but it is something to know. If you're like going off of the exact fabrics, oh, I don't even think I mentioned the yardage. I definitely had a total of five yards of the black background fabric. And then I had more than that for sure of the purple. And I think I had maybe six and a half to seven of the teal. There was a commenter who said that six yards makes a queen. And I don't know if she meant each colorway. Because I definitely barely even had six yards per colorway, but I had more than enough fabric definitely for a quilt top. In fact, I may actually, I, yeah, I may actually make another quilt with the leftovers, but we'll see. So what we, what I'm doing is sorting out by color, um, and then I'm separating those colors in half so that I have like the purple combo with the mint green and then the black combo with the mint green and I, so on and so forth. And so that's kind of how I process this. I'm sure there are better ways if you have been doing this for much longer than I have, you maybe have a better way of doing this, but this is how I did it. This was the best way that my brain could figure out how to do it. And then in the end, I only did about half of the squares that I needed because in the end, um, once I started putting them together, I realized that I wanted, or I tried to get four blocks of every color combo. And so, yeah, I uh, was able to count better once I had made up like half of those blocks, how many more I really needed. And here I am sewing. So I don't know if I actually like this trick because I find it really finicky uh, for the final measurements. I feel like I have to sew very little seam allowance so that when it's cut apart, I have enough to make sure that I really have it square because my, they're not ending up square in the end. <laughs> Not always, and, and it, it's extra frustrating when it's fabric that you like and you have to like scrap a block or a square. But I did do a much better job, I feel like, this round. Uh, I didn't have very many that I had to scrap that were like too small. But making sure that my seam allowance in the middle of the two lines that I've sewn down the center is small and smaller than even what the the um, seam allowance on the ruler that I use looks like just because I don't maybe I'm not paying attention to biases well enough I don't know but I mean it ultimately works out in the end and uh, most of my blocks did square up pretty good um, so <laughs> and this machine that I'm working on is gosh, 20 years old, Tw 21, 22, are you going to age myself right now? 
This was the machine that my mom got me for my 12th birthday. No, Christmas, sorry. 12th Christmas. Birthday's not even close to Christmas. It was a big Christmas because she had gotten a bonus that year, and so there were two big items that she got for me. This and my PlayStation 2, which were like big deals because I didn't get, I never got stuff like this, so. And I still have both, and both are still in working condition. And for, for the record, it's a memory craft, Janome. I have no idea if I've even pronounced that properly. So now I am cutting them in half to get that half square, and I get two out of that. How fun! <laughs> How fun! <laughs> but it does work out. It, um, it really does make the process go by a lot quicker to do it that way, especially when I like big quilts and I want my quilts to be big. I think I might need a new, um, a new, oh gosh, what are they called? Blade? Wheel? For my rotary color cutter? Jeez. Okay. Rotary cutter. There we go. I've got the words. I need a new blade. <laughs> so now that I have a whole bunch sewn up, I am going to square them up to be five by five. I adore the ruler. I think that these quilting rulers are genius, especially with so I'm lining up that this one has a line down the center diagonally and I'm lining that up to match my center seam to make sure that when I square it, my, that line is going exactly where I want it to be going, which is why some, some blocks do need to get scrapped because that it might be five and a half by five and a half, but that center line is not going corner to corner. But yeah, I think I just think that these tools, these tools are so cool, uh, and I don't hear enough about how cool the tools are. Just, just the ruler, the ruler in and of itself. It's got once you like, I don't know, all the lines. It's cool. <laughs> I think it's brilliant. <laughs> so now that I have a whole bunch put together, I realized that I wanted. I needed to make sure that whatever colors I had put purple to teal together, I needed to grab those corresponding colors with the black backgrounds. And then this is me figuring out how to put the larger block together. Like I just wanted to see how it was going to look out, like look together, I'm laying it out like this. But once I laid it out, and I'll actually pop on with a clip that shows that I figured out a faster way to do this once I had done a few of these. But I needed to do a few of them first <laughs> for my brain to figure it out. <laughs> That's a lot to deal with, man. I didn't really think about the colors that I, I mean, I did. I tried to put purple and mint greens together that I thought would look cool together, that I thought the fabrics matched well together. So at least within the, the square, the fabrics would be looking good together. But once, I don't know, I guess we can critique it once it's finished. But uh, looking back, there are definitely some color combos that had I known what they would look like from far away, I might have made a different decision about putting them together. <laughs> I mean, it's not bad. I don't think that any of them don't look good together. I just think that maybe there would have been better combos in the if I had chosen differently. That's all. That's all. But I, boy, I was really digging the way that it was turning out. I, I don't know. I just think the design is super cool. And I might make another one of these someday down the line. 
popping on to say that I have, oh goodness, quite a few of these, I think I'm at uh, nine squares made up or blocks. Um, and I realized that, I realized that all of the blocks lay out like this. And then when you put them together, you just rotate them. Um, which has helped me just uh, go through and make a whole bunch of these. So I have all of these still yet to make, and I think I have a lot more fabric left, a lot more fabric squares left. So I think what I'm gonna do um, is actually make this a little bit larger than I was expecting to, because I like all the fabrics together. And then whatever's left will go over into um, leftovers uh, and be used in some other project. Okay, I'm gonna get back to work. Woo! I did not make it bigger than I thought I was going to. I made it four by four. However, I it's quite big. Like, it's a queen size quilt. Top, anyway. It's not quilted. But here is the final result. I love it. I really do love it. I think it's so fun. Everything matches up. I'm really, really proud of that. But there's also, like, super fun fabrics. I did make a mistake, but apparently um, you're supposed to at least make one so that it's not perfect because being perfect, no one's no one's perfect or something like that. So if you figure out <laughs> what I did wrong in this final layout, you let me know. <laughs> it's not wrong, wrong. I like it. I like the... I I'm, can't wait until it's like actually quilted so I can have it on my bed and then at night... All of those glow-in-the-dark fabrics are going to glow in the dark, and that's going to be so much fun. So much fun. I, yeah, I'm so happy with the way that it turned out. I don't, I really don't know why it's called King's Cross, but I may do this one again. I may do this one again, because it was a lot of fun, and it wasn't that difficult, so... Yeah, thank you so much for joining me again for another crafting video, watching what I've made the past two weeks. I hope you all had a wonderful holiday season and a good new year. We're going to have a good new year. We're going to make it happen. <laughs> and uh, yeah, keep quilting. All right, I will let you guys go. Um like if you want to subscribe if you want to it'd be neat you know all that good stuff all right goodbye <laughs>